We have three crosses here in our sanctuary. <clears throat> I want to speak about what took place there uh, that memorable day. There were three crosses. There were three men. There were three choices. For two, the question, the choice they made followed Pilate's question when he asked, what shall I do then with Jesus? That is an eternal question. 2,000 years later, that question is still appropriate. What will I do with Jesus? Two of these men made that choice that day. On the first cross, we he see them off. He made fun of Jesus. He said, come down from the cross. He thought he knew best. Doesn't that sound a lot like so many today? They can make so many excuses. They can say, why didn't God do this? Why didn't God do that? That's the attitude of this man on the cross. We hear it all the time. A tragedy takes place and we say, why didn't God prevent that? Something happens in our life that we don't like too well, and but why didn't God direct it differently? We're following this man on the cross that thought he knew what God should do that day, thought that Jesus should come down from the cross. That was his opinion. People will make all kinds of excuses for not accepting Christ, for not becoming Christians, for not even going to church. We hear them all the time. They think they know better. They can accuse others that are following Christ of being hypocrites as if they are able to judge. That, to me, is the height of hypocrisy when we think that we can judge others when we're not doing it ourselves. But that was the story of this man on the cross, mocking Jesus, saying, do as I say. I know better than you do. What are you doing there suffering that way? And yet there he was, dying in his sin. No hope for the future. And that's where people are left today when they hang on this cross, the cross of mockery, the cross of rejection, the cross of carelessness. Had he not heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them? He was right next to him. Surely he heard it, but he didn't hear that. And Jesus is still saying to the lost in our society, Father, forgive them. And they are still rejecting and thinking that they know better, as this man did. So he died in his sin, hanging beside Jesus, yet he died in sin, without hope. But there was another cross on Calvary's hill that day. Oh, this is the one that we're thankful for. This is the one that Katrina just sang about a little earlier. That old rugged cross on which Jesus died for our sins. Oh Lord, we wish this cross had never been there. And yet when we say that, we realize if it hadn't been, that we would have no hope. It was on this middle cross that our Savior paid the price of our salvation, where he went willingly to pay that great price of salvation for us. He would not come down. Oh, the mockers could say, come down, but he said, I won't do it. He said that he came to save the one, to lay down his life. No man taketh my life from me. I lay it down of myself. And there he was on that middle cross of Calvary, laying down his life for you and for me. 
and for all who will heed his word. He paid such a price. It was love that held him there. It wasn't the nails. Yes, I believe that he could have come down from that cross. Those nails couldn't have held him. All the things that the Roman soldiers did to hold him on that cross couldn't have held him. It was just his love for us. He loved us so much, wanted to pray for our salvation, that he was willing to die on that cross. A painful death and a despicable death. For the scripture says, cursed is he that hangs on a tree or a cross. But he did it. That's how much he loved us and loved those who were around about the cross that day, those that called for his crucifixion, those that drove the nails in, all those involved to whom he said, Father, forgive them. He paid such a price for our salvation. I like the verse in the song, uh, Green Hill. It says, he died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven, saved by his precious blood. That's why he hung on that cross. That's why he stayed there. That's why he wouldn't come down. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good. Yes, he died for sin. While that man died in his sin, this man, Christ Jesus, died for sin. Yours and mine and all. But then there was another cross on that hill of Calvary that day. Oh, I like this one. I'm so glad that we have a record of this man. Yes, another criminal hung on that cross. But he had a change of heart. I don't know whether he mocked Jesus at first or not. Luke doesn't say that he did. It just says that one did, that one on the far cross. But the other gospels say that they both did at first. But as this man hung there, perhaps as he heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them, something touched his heart. And he confessed his sinfulness. We see that in the 44th verse, 41st verse that was read a little earlier. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. It's hard to confess our faults, our deeds. But this man, as he was dying there on that cross, recognized the fact that he had committed sin. He had been a criminal. He deserved what he got there. Told that man on the far cross, don't you realize that we deserve what we're getting? And we all deserve that. All the sin comes short of the glory of God. Not just this man. Not just the man on the far cross but every one of us. And that's why Jesus died for each one of us. This man began to recognize him. And when he confessed his sin, that's, the, uh, that's where salvation starts, isn't it? With confession of sin. As the old Negro spiritual said, it's not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I think that was the attitude of this man. He realized that it was him. He was the one standing in the need of prayer. He was the one that needed the Savior who was dying beside him on the middle cross. And we are the ones that need that forgiveness. Every one of us. Some perhaps 
have gone deeper into sin than others. But may we confess as this man did, we're dying, we're paying the price, or would have paid the price if Jesus had not paid it. But Jesus paid the price for us. This man recognized that, and he confessed his sin. And he looked to Jesus. Verse 42 says, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. He looked to Jesus. That's our only hope. We have no hope in our deeds. We have no hope in someone else. Sometimes I've run into people that are far from God, but they're very quick to say, oh, I had a godly grandparent. My uncle was a preacher. My father was a good man. And that's all good. Praise God if you have that type of background. But it won't get anybody to heaven. That person would, that was that person that way would go because of that. What the decisions they made. But each one of us has to call ourselves. And so he made that request. Oh, it's simple. You know, sometimes people can make salvation seem so involved and difficult. But it's very simple. For just confess our sins, confess our need to him, to Jesus, and say, Father, forgive me. Or as this man said, remember me. I'm turning my life into your hands. Say, remember me. Oh, thank you for doing that. Oh. It's a good reminder to each one of us. And he had faith. Faith is so important. Look what he said of Jesus. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Recognize that this man on the middle cross was the king of glory. He was going into his kingdom. And so this man said, when you are there, when you become, remember me. I think what he really meant had, was have mercy on he realized Jesus was king. And yet how many people will question that today and think that others are in charge? Forget that Jesus is still the king of kings and lord of lords, and it is to him that we call. And that's what this man is. And he's an example for every one of us. That's why I'm so glad we have that recorded in the scripture of Luke, that this man cried out to Jesus for mercy. He set that example for everyone to come. And what was he doing? He was calling on Jesus and he received a wonderful promise. Isn't God faithful? It says in the next verse there, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Not sometime way down the line, but this very day, You'll be with me. When he died, he'd go to be with Jesus. Isn't that our hope? And this man found it. Why? Because he turned himself over to Jesus. He died to sin. Died out to sin. Put it behind. Confessed what he'd done. And called upon Jesus for mercy. And so as we look to these crosses... One died in sin, one died for sin, and one died to sin. May we be this, like this man. We can't be in the place of Jesus. Only Jesus could die for our sins. We can't even die for our own sins. We have to rely upon him, turn our lives over, die out to sin as this man did and accept Jesus Christ as he died on that cross of Calvary that day so long ago for you and for me. Our choice then is very simple. We can reject Jesus and his offer of salvation and be lost for time and for eternity. Or we can forsake sin 
and receive salvation. I trust that each one has made that decision today to accept Jesus, to accept that price that he paid on that middle cross so long ago and yet so appropriate for each one of us today.